back to Linux Weekly, daily Wednesday, where we can sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things going on in the world of Linux, open source, anything else that catches our fancy. I'm Ben Stone, joined every week by Joe Bryant and <laughs> one Pedro Mateus. Hi, everyone. Watch hello, hello. On Twitch. Thanks for showing up. <laughs> Come do that if you don't do it sometimes. You'll be like, hey, I'm going to type things and we'll respond. It's kind of fun. But we got a lot to talk about this week. And before we get into that, I have a new toy. I made a special trip Ooh. all the way over to my rental to grab something because I've been waiting on it for like a week. This is the new hotness from EVGA. This is their XR1. Is it the one? Yes. One light, non-Blinkatron edition. Pedro, you got a Blinkatron edition handy for the people at I home. do. It's very reflective. <laughs> <laughs> if I point it this way, you can see the light. Uh, oh, look, there's Jill. <laughs> Oh, what I'll tell you what I'm doing. I'm checking out stream delay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, uh, this is a very interesting little bit of kit. Uh, it's OBS certified. Now, it doesn't say it works with Linux, but that's going to be the point of the video. We're going to find out. It's not shouty. It's not reflective. It doesn't blink. It doesn't have extra knobs. It's got 4K pass-through, and it does 1080p60. All for $60. So... Stay tuned for that. Um, I don't want to pinky swear for anyone, but I should have a video up for patrons for this one, a preview video mm. by Friday, if not Sunday, depending on how that works out. But yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to that. This is a trans. That this is the first thing I've ever bought, and I'm going to say thank you, patrons, just to do a video on everything else. I lie to myself. Like, I'll find a use for it. Like, <laughs> I'll, I'll have a spare encoder, but. Joe, what do you call something from the 80s? <laughs> is it vintage or is it retro? Uh, retro. retro? <laughs> For me, it would be retro because I, I don't think I'm vintage, but <laughs> 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 but although I was born in the 70s, but <laughs> anyways. I, um, so. <laughs> I asked uh, Mathieu Comandon, I asked that in, the, uh, in our Discord last week. I'm like, hey, yeah. man. What do you call something? He, older. he said, "No, no, no! It is le nostalgic." Like, right. nostalgic. Yes, <laughs> yes. Like, fine. So, what I ended up doing is, I, I'd like to show everyone my nostalgic Apex Systems compiler. Aw, look at it! It's in the rack, being all nice and nostalgic. That's a video that I'm currently in the research process of. You've ever heard of a thing called AGC? It's something you've definitely used before. If you've ever done any type of video conferencing, be it on mm -hmm. Discord, Skype, um, what's the other ones? Uh, Teams. No, no, no. Yeah. no. <laughs> Jitsi. Flash. Jitsi. Discord. <laughs> OBS Ninja. <laughs> All of that. And everyone knows one thing about AGC is it's horrible. It's bad. It's the thing that, you know, if you're like, what are you talking about? You know, when the person goes away and they get something and when they come back, they're like a billion times too loud and like, ah, geez, mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. auto game control. Mm -hmm. And um, what that silver box was doing back in 83 up into 87, they're still made today, the uh, 320Ds, giggity, it, they are effectively auto game control for broadcast. And um, you'll still mm -hmm. find them in you know, stations that haven't switched over to digital yet. Or even some that do, because they do make the digital AES versions. And I'm using it right now. And what it, well, It's kind of like sound reinforcement. You can set it and say, I always want to be around this volume. And their claim to fame is you can't hear them working. That's it, you know. Hmm. It does it through expansion, compression, and leveling. And so it does it all in real time. There's no delay. And, you know, I can get... This is what you can't tell right now, is I significantly have dropped the volume that I'm speaking to the microphone and I'm going to bring it back up right now. There you go. And it's going to always hover right around there. So it's not going to protect you from things like, I don't know, like screaming into a microphone or anything like that. Limiting, it's kind of iffy on you. Definitely. You would typically see these in a station <laughs> rack, like a dominator up under it to catch that, but it'll be a fun little video, vintage retro slash nostalgic technology. Mm. I'm going to, do a little board walkthrough on that. Yes, we will compel ourselves. I will, I will make a very compelling, <laughs> compelling video. It's 
Steve, you, it's a compelling argument you have there. <laughs> Steve, you should get a kick out of them. These things were made in Hollywood, California. Remember the 80s? Yeah. They were made in the... Yeah. <laughs> How about you, Jill? Oh, so this is really, really wonderful. So me and Steve Husband were finally able to get together with our very own Strider, creator of Lutris in chat. So we got together with him on Sunday in IRL, finally, um, <laughs> now that we all have our shots <laughs> from the for the pandemic. So, and we had a wonderful time at the Redondo Pier, eating dinner, visiting, watching the ocean, and looking for pelicans to take pictures of for Matthew. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I did show the picture of the two pelicans. Yeah. I think it was getting on the tram or the bus or whatever. He took a picture of a chain link fence and I told him to assault it. I don't know. Yeah, his his showing his adventures coming down to the South Bay. That was fun. All the wild and wacky stuff. But we had a great time and we're planning another LGC party. So, yay, finally, it's been a long time. <laughs> well, I'm not going to spoil anything for anybody, but you might want to tune in this Saturday because it's going to it's going to be very. Um, yeah, think, retro. It's going to be retro. <laughs> and some people are like, who? What? I don't. What's going on? This is crazy talk. <laughs> uh, stay tuned for that. Now, mm-hmm. Jill, I, I know we always yeah. talk about flat packs and snaps and don't like them mm-hmm. or like them we always end up working our way back to like what's wrong with app images and one thing people have always brought up package management yes so awesome yes exactly as ven has been saying we have been needing a universal app image installer in linux for a long time and now we have one yay i was so excited about this it's called app man and it works like apt or pacman or dnf and can be installed by just downloading a small script and it's so easy to use uh, with app man you can install app images from the terminal like you do with snaps and flat packs and software from your local uh, distros uh, repositories and it's as easy as app man install the name of the app image or app man tac q to search the list of available app images with keywords and what I did, and it worked really nicely, is I did a search for video edi- editors with the TAC-Q option. And a lot of app image video editors uh, came up in a list, and uh, including Caden Live, Avid Demux, Shotcut, and OpenShot. So I went ahead and installed uh, Shotcut, the Shotcut video editor via AppMan, and it worked beautifully. And this, this was just... So amazing. I've been wanting this feature for so long under Linux. And so from here out, AppMan will be in my default installed software on every distro I install. Absolutely. (laughs) It's really cool. It's Yeah, no, it's very nice. It's very, Mm -hmm. very welcome. But here's the thing. Mm -hmm. I'm going to need someone to create a centralized repo because... Uh, as Jill was alluring to, uh, doing the search for it with AppMan returns some, but not all. You can update some of the app images, but not all. So someone needs to create a centralized repo, and then I'm going to need someone to also create Ubuntu app image edition or Fedora app <laughs> image edition, whatever, whichever distro you want. It, it needs to be a distro that's focused entirely on app images. I need that to... Complete my XKCD 927 bingo card. <laughs> because at that point, yes, we have a new standard. <laughs> that one. <laughs> ben had that one ready. <laughs> hey, man, it's like I'm psychic. I was reading the show notes. Uh, here's the thing. I, I think this is very neat. You know, if I want to try before I buy, it's always app image because I don't want to install mm-hmm. a... Um, entire like versioning repository or, you know i don't want to install snap and i don't want to install flatback nothing against them it's just that's mm-hmm. a lot of extra baggage to hang around to try an app real quick for something i'm potentially going to install later so i like this i thought this was a good idea i dropped it in the notes and people can play around with i mean this is i think the valid argument against app images like how do i find them where's the repo and do pedro's point and we get that centralized repo and we get everyone updating that and we get something to index that we got a nice little tool there, you know? Yup. Yeah. But. Like something that, that interacts with the app image installer that's online. 
the mm -hmm. online website, that would be great. Yeah. We, we need to make a GUI mm -hmm. for it and put some next buttons App on Image it. App Image Hub. <laughs> the App Image Let's Hub. See if that's the developers the name of it. <laughs> went, okay, so uh, App Man is a thing and it has this API that tracks some app images that it knows. So we'll all make a point to include that. <laughs> That's never going to happen. It's going to be a hard mm -hmm. sell because <laughs> we got the two competing standards that no one really likes on the desktop. This, this could work because app images work very well on the desktop. Mm -hmm. They can start up and wait on them. Nothing against um, flat packs, but GUIs for installing things <laughs> to that point. Yeah. To that page or what I did there. Um, <laughs> Gnome. <laughs> Gnome's been on it. Gnome's done a fantastic job um, since forever ago of having a software like resource center. You can pull it up, look at stuff, install it. And like, this has just been a thing in Gnome. And I've always been uh, curious about it. And I could click on something like, oh, mm -hmm. that's neat. Ne just I'm from the wrong age to make use of it. But they keep on working on it. And that's the important bits because... Uh, you know, a couple of things have been worked on here. This is from blogs.gnome.org. All this is going to be in our show notes. But, you know, just kind of adding some creature comforts to this. You know, communicating app download size in a very more a nuanced way, which is good. Just telling you how big it is, especially for the Flatpak apps. That was the last time I used the Gnome Software Center when it stealth installed a Flatpak. And that's when I found out, like, what? <laughs> that's the thing. And they're also going to be incentivizing app developers to use portals rather than parking holes in the sandboxes, which is, I think is a good idea. And they're going to be warning people about potential security problems, exposing age ratings. That's also a nice thing to see. How do you do all this, mm -hmm. though? They're going to do it through something they're calling context tiles. Neat. I mean, it's like a little pop-up showing you. And you might be thinking, isn't mm -hmm. that more like a mobile first type way of going about it? Possibly, but it makes sense on the desktop. When you visually you look at this, like I, I, I get it, but there's a couple of issues. I mean, here's the one I do want to show. Um, like safety. You get you get your safe, you get your green check, potentially unsafe, then you have unsafe, which means it can read and write all of your data. And it's wait, what's that say, Pedro? It's using a what? <laughs> The legacy windowing system, windowing which system. was my question. So are you just going to brand everything that runs X as unsafe? Because then like 99% of the software in the GNOME software center is going to be unsafe. Mm -hmm. We're looking at a screenshot of Spotify, which is unsafe because legacy windowing system, which I... X. X. Oh. Uh, Oh, okay. I, yeah. <laughs> that, there's going to be a lot of scared people there. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming. Um, please will someone write in. I'm like, you're completely wrong. That's not what we meant when we said legacy windowing system. I'm like, okay, maybe also. So then you better start yeah. explaining because yeah. this <laughs> blog post explains nothing. <laughs> the other thing that will be a strike against you is proprietary code. You know, if the source code is not public, so it cannot be independently mm. audited, and it might be unsafe. Okay. There we go. I've said my bit about that. This, I also think, is very neat. They're going to be adding hardware support windowing to let you know about things, man. I think that's much needed. Like, hey, desktop only, gamepad, need that. Okay. And, Ooh. you know, like looking into like, oh, this requires OpenGL acceleration or Vulkan or something like that. And again, as I said, the age rating, T for teen. Uh, what is this? Uh, ors. All right. I mean, it's like, is it ESBU or... Peggy, but nope. Um, adult <laughs> bloodshed. And the age rating? Of, but yes. <laughs> Listen, Jill, this is clearly, you know, adult um, AO for Twitter. And, um, oh my gosh. <laughs> and last. I but hadn't not read the least, fine print on that. Uh, <laughs> metadata. So trying to encourage. Well, there's a thing for Mega Glust. It's for teenagers. But the metadata, you know, helping to clean up, you know, some of the visual looks and feels of apps that are displayed in the GNOME Software Center. So I think overall, mm -hmm. yes, there's some curious bits in there, but a lot of it makes sense. It's an, Coming at it from a perspective of somebody, I've <laughs> never really thought to use an app store on Linux. 
you know, it didn't exist when I started using Linux and it got introduced and for a long time. It's like, that's a really great way to get outdated stuff that's no longer maintained. Uh, but they're making progress. They're doing work. And that's the important bit. And a lot of it is good. A lot of it is very good, like having the metadata and having a good description of what the thing does and the context tiles giving you like a little summary of what to expect. That's very nice. That's very, very nice. Why are you branding stuff that uses X as unsafe? <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> yeah. I know it's no more talking about. It's their way or the highway, but I'm not entirely sure that this is the best way to promote your thing and your love for Wayland. Come on, please. <laughs> oh boy. I might want to revisit that. I know, I know it's in keeping with the way that, you know, Gnome has mm -hmm. been doing things for... When did Gnome 3 come out? Uh, uh, see, look at yeah. that. There was somebody, somebody just lost me. So they had like a 30 to 1 bet that you were going to take a swipe bet and at no, they just lost okay. like How could I not? <laughs> That's why it's 30 to 1. I mean, the other person just made a ton of money. Well, Pedro's just upset that he can't show bloodshed. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. See, there's a thing about bloodshed. You can. It's just, it, yeah. it's going to get an age rating. But um, yes. I didn't see anything about nudity, though. Here's the thing. No. So we're still doing that. Okay. Do that, like, to get an unsafe flag, I, you got to look at, like, what else is available. Yeah. What a, Every single thing in your Steam library is unsafe, according to this. Yes. Because it's yeah. the Steam itself legacy. is yeah. unsafe. Yeah. Steam. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we you know we've been waiting for a long time for the software center refresh on GNOME, so I was looking forward to this, and it and it it does look really nice. I like the the context tiles, and you know there were actually a lot of speed improvements with the the software installer in GNOME 40, so hopefully now it will be even more performant with its new layout. I am hoping and looking forward to testing it. Hmm. Yeah, I just don't have any. My only experiences with GNOME, uh, outside of like GNOME 2, yes, I'm not going to be that, is uh, <laughs> installing GNOME when like you're doing a rollout for Ubuntu for somebody to give you that GNOME thing. Mm -hmm. You do that to open a terminal and install XFCE like a normal person. But speaking of XFCE, the best <laughs> file Yay. manager ever created uh -huh. is getting better. So this is awesome. We get some wonderful new features for the XFCE Thunar file manager, which which are coming thanks to the hard work of students at the Google Summer of Code from this year. And so the Thunar version 4.17.5 development release is out with lots of new updates. And they did fix a lot of bugs as well. And uh, But one of my favorites is the bookmarks menu got, uh, the bookmarks got moved into a separate bookmarks menu and a create bookmark option was added. And I'm actually gonna love this new, uh, the new bookmarks menu in Thunar because I actually use bookmarks all the time and all my file managers and this will make it, make it make them easier to manage in Thunar and much more intuitive than just creating them in the sidebar like you're used to. So this is, it's, it's just nice that they made a separate menu for it. And I'm, I'm we're probably going to see more features expanded in that menu in the future. Mm -hmm. So that's cool. It's pretty mm -hmm. decent. You know, being able to set the default application, that's very nice. Now let me explain to you mm -hmm. why, because um, the way XFCE rules currently is your default application is the last one you set it to use. You know, it's right clicking on it. Let's use MP3s, for example, because um, it gets a little bit annoying. It does, because uh, I need to add ID3 tags to the podcast, and I make a bunch of MP3s on Wednesdays and Sundays. The other five days of the week, I would like that mm -hmm. to launch with mPlayer and not easy tag. So this is a way to mm -hmm. put the screws to it yeah. and force it down a little bit. And... Um, yeah, I think it's great, but Pedro has, uh, Pedro's going to tell you why, but you just burn it all down and start over. No, that's uh, <laughs> what I'm going to bring up is the exact same uh, complaints that I brought up last time we talked about Thunar specifically. And it's that something it that awesome they themselves. For your KDE brain to handle. No, that's Aww. fine. It's actually fine. And the bookmarks thing is great. It basically puts it on par with Kaha now. So they're effectively 
on par functionality wise so very nice the um the, the the thing that i keep bringing up and they have acknowledged it and it was supposed to have been introduced in 416 with uh xfc 416 it was the option to have per folder uh sorting and uh like view options like say mm-hmm. you go to the downloads and you want it sorted by file type so you have all the isos in one place and you have all the jpegs in another place and whatever else all together. And then you go to the documents and you want it sorted by date. So the latest document that you edited is at the top. It still doesn't work because when you change it, uh, it changes globally still. So you still can't have the per folder thing and you can't change a the icon mm. for a specific folder still, which, come on, everything else does it. So come on. It's, it's <laughs> yeah, to be it held time. Windows users, Pedro. <laughs> <laughs> KDE users. <laughs> KDE users, mate users, no users. Everyone else gets to enjoy that. It's just XFC that for some reason doesn't. Yes. It's keeping the riffraff out. <laughs> <laughs> the, um, the only thing I really use Thunar for is, um, let's see, legitimate uses. SFTP. Mm, I'll yeah, use it for that. Very good for that. And the other primary use is navigating a directory structure to get to a terminal window because if i need to like go in several deep it was quicker on that click 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 right click open terminal here done nope well, mm-hmm. i don't know i mean <laughs> it, it, yeah. it's interesting work maybe they'll get uh the creature comfort things you know bookmarks that's not, you know i use the bookmark stuff and you know that's like my dot in my home folder and i hope i never lose that because uh, yeah <laughs> Yeah, work all around. I have lots of my configs, you know, bookmarked as well that I edit rand, you know, I am often. Trying to mm-hmm. think, what, what what's the use case for having like different icons and different directories, or what? What are you trying to explain? Because again, I don't really use a file manager. So for you the can two color things. code stuff to yours to make it easier for you to find something without you know having to actively read everything or say you have a folder that's just dedicated to games like a certain someone on a stream yesterday that has a bunch of games and uh, being able to set the folder to the icon of the game so you can immediately tell which folder to look at just by looking at the icon it 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 Mm. is it makes things faster and yeah so those those are the two complaints that i have about thunar (laughs) it's for lazy people Mm, yeah All right. <laughs> Everyone's lazy. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> oh man, Fifty Shades some of Lazy. Some more than others, but everyone's lazy. <laughs> I'll tell you about some people who are most definitely not lazy. AJA Kona. You've probably never heard of them because their stuff's wicked expensive. Ask me how I know. They have um, added a bit to OBS to support their capture input and output devices. Now, we're talking like. Magewell level stuff, black magic level stuff, but better. Pretty much all the way around. Uh, this this pull request is four hundred and thirty two thousand lines of code. Oh wow! That now a little bit of that CSDK, but not as much as you uh, the developers were hoping initially. They're like, we can separate that. I'm like, oh lord, it's still so big, and uh, also, hello, President of AJ Acona, you like my tweet? Thank you. Um, but now send me some hardware for testing. Uh, This is really good. I mean, this is something, I mean, this is going to be for Linux, Windows, Mac, and all that. But up until now, you know, outside of Mage One Black Magic, we have this entire product stack from AGA, which typically just high end and broadcast level hardware is going to be available to everyone. And if this gets merged, Here's a fun little fact. It will put OBS over the 1 million mark with locks. So that, that's pretty neat. And, you know, uh, you got to compare like this to Black Magic with OBS support. You know, Black Magic is very happy to tell everyone, hey, we work with OBS. You can do it. AJA and OBS team developed this together and they've got it in with some members of it because there were other members of the OBS team like, what? I was there when that thing <laughs> dropped. There was some confusion. Uh, but compared to Black Magic, to which was revealed, um, like they didn't help at all. Like they were openly like, not our problem. You can make it work if you want. 
No. Yeah. <laughs> No, no, the, the, the thing that jumped out at me is, first of all, the AJ Kona uh, can never be sold in Portugal. Why? The <laughs> and then there's the AJ Corvid, which also has an unfortunate name for a completely different reason. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> so it is, yeah, no, the, those two names immediately jumped out at me for completely different reasons, but yeah, that that's unfortunate. <laughs> It genuinely took me a minute when you were saying that. I'm like, why are they made out of fruit shape eraser? Oh, oh language, right? No, right. <laughs> it's you know that word, ah. <laughs> the one you can't know. <laughs> so what? I, I can send you a box of codas. <laughs> you might go to jail. So, oh. <laughs> uh, I, 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 excellent work. It's always great to have options and. I'm always on the uh, lookout. Pitchers are going to have more fun with this for, you know, Kona fives are kind of pricey right now. So if I can find some gently used Kona fours. <laughs> well, I guess it must not be an English name. I don't know. Or Portuguese. No, no, I think that's a Canadian name, right? No, no. no that's that's a, the name of a place in Canada. Texas. Oh, no, no. I'm talking about oh, like the oh. Kona AGA is from... Uh, a, like, oh, okay, uh, but uh, yeah, it's because I remember we played a game uh, on the Foul Method um, podcast on Saturday that was uh, called Kona, and it took place in Canada. So I yes, think uh, mm. ca Canadian Hawaii. That's where the yeah, that's from. They annexed it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so stream decks. I have one. Mm -hmm. That's how you know you you've, you've just gone too far. You've gone too deep. Well, you have a little box on your desk with a bunch of little buttons on it that you press and the computer <laughs> does stuff. Which is always entertaining. And if I'm over at your house and I see you have a stream deck, I'm going to check it for dust. Because let's face it, you wouldn't be the first person that bought one for the look. I make a lot of use out of mine. Uh, I use it for switching the show. If I'm going to go like, hey, I'm, I just pressed a button on the deck and I'm going to go back to a three shot, press the button. And I have a bunch of juggling fun times on the Saturday show for the cheer acquisition because that requires like pressing three buttons, jumping to different pages and coming back. The problem with this is there's no official support. La gasp from El Gato, the cat, <laughs> uh, for your Stream Decks under Linux. Now, there has been a project uh, called Stream Deck underscore UI that has been around it. You know, you install it with mm. Pip. I just didn't even do a video on it. But the main reason is because it required the use of Xdoot, which I was like, oh, that's quite unfortunate. You know, XD. XDO tool. I always call it X dude because it sounds funnier. Mm. Um, <laughs> the reason I couldn't use it with OBS very effectively is because that, which will change your window focus to go to different scenes in OBS, will also cause you to lose window focus on like a game. And you know what? That could be catastrophic. It's when you're trying to play it. <laughs> I'll tell you about a way around it in a minute. But I do want to give this mention this is Unix Stream Deck Stream Deck UI. This just came out. Ooh. I mean, this is uh, like 13 months ago they did the license, but the recent updates, it's up and working. And um, it comes in two parts, Stream Deck D and Stream Deck UI. d bus for your deck. I know, everyone's always wanted this, <laughs> but I do believe people are going to get confused because the current working solution that I was just telling you about, with uh, the Python spaghetti nonsense, is, uh, you guessed it, Stream Deck dash UI. So um, mm -hmm. now, as I was saying, mm -hmm. the original Stream Deck UI had some issues with Wayland due to Pi input. It wasn't able to um, gel with that perfectly or quite nicely. I wonder if this is going to take care of this, but it's not showing video of users. The UI looks roughly similar to uh, the old Stream Deck UI, other Stream Deck UI, the OG. And you, you can put your icons on there. You can select your actions and... Um, Pretty much that. And Same. the way that they're doing mm -hmm. it, despite using XDO tool, uh, actually works around the having to focus the window to do the thing because they're sending uh, keyboard inputs. So you're going to have to do some manual work and set some keyboard uh, shortcuts to the things you want to do in OBS first. But then it doesn't need focus because it's just doing it and via everyone the who uh, owns keyboard shortcuts. Stream deck and has done that. Pedro doesn't know what he's talking about because it will still lose focus. <laughs> but I use the keyboard shortcuts on the regular keyboard yep. and it doesn't. Same here. <laughs> the, 
you can set that through <laughs> XDO tool. So StreamDeck UI is doing it poorly. <laughs> tell that to OBS. <laughs> because mm. what you're doing is triggering keyboard shortcuts inside of OBS. Yes, but it doesn't steal focus if you do it directly from the keyboard, so why would it with XDO tool? It does. <laughs> Something's wrong here. <laughs> it shouldn't be doing <laughs> that. Make sense. <laughs> this is like something I have n- no issue arguing about, man. You got to do the XD Go tool, and you're going to be calling whatever you're going to be focusing plus the key press. Because XDO tool requires that window mm. of like, hey, I'm going to be going to OBS to in order to input this. It needs to know where it's going to go to send those commands, which will obtain focus okay. for OBS. Then XDO tool is the problem, and that's probably why it didn't work in Wayland, because, you know, X. Also <laughs> genuinely the first thing I said. Um, <laughs> I have the patience of a saint sometimes. <laughs> now, here's the thing. Um, moral of the story, this might be neat if you need some desktop shortcuts applications, stuff like that. You know, you wanted to set it like, hey, I want to sit down and I want to like press five buttons and open up all the typical applications because I don't know how to set stuff on auto start. And this would somehow be more complex way of doing things, which I fully support, by the way. Uh, If you are going to be using OBS, go check out a video I did or just go right to the website BitFocus Companion. That is the way to do it. If you're going to use a stream deck, it's going to hook you up. With OBS WebSockets, you can run it remotely. You can do it on localhost. I have a little Pi in the rack back here that is powering my Stream Deck, completely separate system, and it's connected to OBS on this box over the network, and there's so many more things you can do with BitFocus Companion. Nothing against this project whatsoever. I think it's great, but, you know, maybe I'll go back and test. I want to see, because that was always the killer with Stream Deck UI and using the um, Hexdude is losing focus. Silence. I love my yeah, segments. No. <laughs> <laughs> if, if, the, if the problem is with XDO, <laughs> then yeah, no. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Um, yeah, go check out my video on um, BitFocus Companion if you want to take a look or install this and report back and be like, you don't know what you're talking about. Pedro was right. That'll make me do it and be like, nah, here, here's a video of it. <laughs> no, that's the thing. <laughs> if it turns out that I was right, and then Ven uh, will never admit that he's wrong, and we will never hear anything else about it. Because <laughs> that's never happened. But hey, there should be a face. <laughs> <laughs> and a few times that has happened, uh, you haven't said anything else about it, so no one remembers. <laughs> And the occasional <laughs> times, you know, the two times that I've brought it up in the past, you go, I don't remember that. Huh. That's going to be an honest thing. <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm it has happened before. For poor memory. This is uncalled for. You couldn't have cut me more deeply. <laughs> I get attacked for having a poor memory all the time, too, so you don't get away with it. That's because you got the memory of a goldfish. <laughs> And you double down on things you haven't tested. Oh, look, a fish tank. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, look, a fish tank. So if you'd like to help finance this fish tank. I'm not getting involved in this argument. Head over to patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. You can support our nonsense and everything that we get up to and into, up to including this show. But it doesn't stop there. We do multiple streams each week on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays. Yeah, I do one on Friday (laughs) and Saturday. And um, we got some rewards. Pedro, could you possibly remember some of the rewards that we have? I I, I can, uh, I think. You get Discord access, which you also get if you uh, (laughs) subscribe to our Twitch. That's another option. Uh, You get a RSS feed with the pre-pre-super shows that we do. You also have access to everything else, all the videos, uh, all the streams, you have access to it earlier than everyone else. Usually not by much. Ven uh, usually only gives people a few hours, maybe a couple of days uh, early access than everyone else gets it. Because, you know, it's very nice that you're giving us uh, some money so you get some advantages for that. But mm-hmm. we don't want to stop anyone from, you know, watching us. So everyone gets everything. Soonish. Well, I mean, I can do that. I could just take the audio out of it. <laughs> <laughs> and 
and you get the, the joy of listening to us every week. <laughs> It is what we do. Uh, don't forget out with us. You can watch us live, share the show, anything that you got planned, and send us some feedback. We also have a, we just got a gang of different ways. I mean, if you want to go check that out, that's the support button. We got the Patreon. We got merch. Put us all over your face, chest, and neck. We got the PayPals. We got Wish Zones. These two Yahoo's got places where you can buy them things and make them read stuff. And of course, you know, yes. Bitcoin. It's worthless. Mm-hmm. Get rid of it. And when you do that, send it my way and we'll convert that into studio nice. equipment. <laughs> Are we good? Yeah, no, store.linuxgamecast.com. That's, that's, that's where you go to um, cover your cover your shame in our shame. You know I what? <laughs> I, 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 I got questions about this uh, pie cutter. Is that a pie cutter? <laughs> Oh boy! Uh, yes, That's it like is. A it has the serrated edge. <laughs> that that looks like something yeah, I would like, like uh, a... to try to amputate something on Pedro with after after I've dulled it a bit. <laughs> that, that looks like it a might very be a bit blunt. Apple pie. <laughs> well, I want to drag it across some brick first, just to. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we do have time for a slice of pie and uh, pie TV. Homebrew Amazon uh, pie sticks, yay! Yeah, it, 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 this is uh, this falls very much into the why category. So it is a um, little baseboard for the compute module four, which effectively turns it into the same form factor, if, unless you don't count the you know the big mm. HDMI port sticking out the back. I see the point immediately. <laughs> What, not having uh, mini HDMI? <laughs> no, RetroPie. Uh, you can do that with a regular Raspberry Pi already. That, that, that's the thing, because if you're turning the Compute Module 4 into the same for fa- form factor as the original Pi, why? <laughs> Unless you really hate the uh, teeny tiny um, well, micro HDMI the, connectors, um, si- which, fair enough. Yeah, well, I'm looking at the size <laughs> of the USB thing, and that, that's more like the size of a pi zero uh pi zero is a bit smaller than that about? look at the size of the hdmi about. port there. <laughs> but compared to a full-size pie it's much smaller it's much longer it's but. a bit smaller but yeah it, it is also a bit chunkier so it is yeah no it, the thing here is very much so you can have the stick form factor it's just the one device that you plug into the back of your tv with a USB cable for so power probably coming off of the TV like too. More aerodynamic in my slingshot. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that that would be an actual point for it because everything else I just, just get a regular pie. It'll probably be easier. <laughs> what? Hang Although on. Pedro, this does reduce the external color c- clutter color <laughs> clutter created by using a classic full size Raspberry Pi four. And speaking of color, you can use it to illuminate and produce rainbow vomit on your TV monitor by connecting an LED strip to the ambilight connector. And <laughs> how about this? Let me see if I can try to sell this to Pedro. Um, being a compute module, unlike a regular Raspberry Pi, couldn't you upgrade this? Uh, for the entire RAM? Yes. Or like a different compute module altogether? Um, the compute modules haven't been backwards compatible. Mm. Mm. They haven't. <laughs> None of the compute modules thus far have been backwards compatible. So. How many compute Very modules true. have they made? Yeah. <laughs> Two? Two. <laughs> Two, yeah. yeah. It I- was the three that was the, it was a dim likes, SO dim like slot. Whoa. And this one has the a little connector at the bottom. Do you, do you think they'll go for like just a third one just to mess with people? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Again, of the two there are, th- there have been two different, um, connectivity setters mm-hmm. so i would probably no, that one doesn't limb on this one with as many things as we've seen to take because the first one let's be honest no one really made anything or no. yeah <laughs> <laughs> this one i don't know i think they might have something with this one i don't know i mean like, this one uh, they started with the baseboard that was really really good uh so yeah every other project that comes around the cm4 including this one 
still useless in my brain, but all right, fine. If you, if you must, <laughs> you know what? Let's talk about useless. Uh, Argon Eon, Ooh, four bay network storage powered by, you guessed it, a big, chunky, full-sized, too big for a TV, Raspberry Pi. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know what you love? This is from the creators of the Argon One. Here comes the Argon Triangle. Uh, it, it's the 4 pay NAS enclosure. It's got an OLED system display. It comes with a real-time clock. It even has Pedro's favorite accessory. It does. It does. And they're doing it on purpose now. <laughs> you can tell that they're doing it on purpose Best because there's no reason to have this. I ever spent. Uh, it, now, this, is got, this is full of HDDs, so it's going to require 12-volt, 5-amp power supply. And, um, well, if you got in quick, you could have gotten the basic kit without a pie, but everything else you needed for about 100 U.S. dollars. Now, mm-hmm. let's just go back to that. Um <laughs> I got problems, okay? I, I got problems, but this also has problems. <laughs> um, <laughs> I have an Argon one, and you know what? Uh, this is what I've learned from Argon. Argon appears to be much more focused on looks versus cooling, because I'm going to be honest <laughs> with you. The Argon one case, I got the V2 of that slick looking case. It's nice. Uh, horrible thermals. Um, I mean, for short burst, like if you're trying to use it as a desktop, but for prolonged, it's just poorly designed for this. This looks like it's going to have some thermal issues uh, outside of having spinny drives inside. Look at those little vents up top mm. with a little itsy bitsy <laughs> fan. But, but it's, it's, it's a bit restricted. <laughs> Pedro, it's got a no It doesn't matter. Shut up. I'll just. <laughs> that is definitely one of the big selling points. And that was. The having four uh, SATA ports just ready to go and you just put in the pie and everything else. I'm like, uh-huh. okay, so how much does it cost? And I scroll down. It's like, oh, the um, the early bird uh, is like 67 pounds. Uh, it's already gone. So I'm glad I missed it because I would have just dropped the money right then and there. It's like, the gimme. <laughs> Aww. Yeah, that one's well, that then, one's gone. <laughs> then you don't have to put spinning rest in it. That'll that'll make it not as hot. <laughs> you can oh, just yeah, use SSDs. classic yep. SDs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so and, and and this is really cool because uh, you can actually get, you know uh, a pledge for one hundred and eighty dollars to receive the Argon Eon with a Raspberry Pi four four gig, and uh, which is. Still, I think a good deal compared to the price of a lot of NASAs out there, pre built NASAs. Yes. And <laughs> yeah, the, who's uh, some of those run over a thousand dollars, by the way. <laughs> and um, this has only 40 days to go, but they've already surpassed their original goal mm-hmm. of three thousand five hundred seventy three dollars. <laughs> to eighty four thousand three hundred and eighty six dollars so they're doing quite well <laughs> that, that's very good i think a lot of people have yeah. uh, just a bunch of spare laptop hard drives laying around and they need to i do put the container. <laughs> yeah there you go 12 of them <laughs> so i'm going to need one of these but with 12 SATA connectors no you're not i'll be a couple of these and duct tape on daisy chain i'm gonna be brilliant um <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, it is the uh, the little USB bridge that seems deliberate now because with the first Argon case, like, okay, you introduce the NVMe thing later, so you needed something to just adapt it quickly. Well, actually, Fair. Pedro, it's not NVMe. It's, um... <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's USB, uh, NVMe or PCI over USB, mm-hmm. so it is going to be slower, but yes. Well, it doesn't take I, I got the point. It doesn't take NVMe at all. SSDs, the uh, M.2 keyed. Uh, M.2 SATA. SATA, yes. Okay, all right. I, I thought they said NVMe, but what else? Uh, the um, this one, on the other hand, this one is being designed from the ground up with the bridge in mind. So why? Why couldn't you just have made that internal? <laughs> <laughs> but hey, I guess that that's uh, that's a, a branding thing now, so fair enough, I guess. And uh, Jill mentioned the price for 130 pounds or 180 dollars with the pie included. 
that's not bad. That's, that's not uh, bad. what I'm. I want to see for some. that price. I would replace my micro ATX NAS just like that. <laughs> I would think about it after I saw some performance numbers, which are missing from this. It, they have the prototype. This is the funding runs. Like, can we? Is this viable? <laughs> I don't necessarily want to beta test this. I'm not terribly worried because I'm pretty sure that I'm going to say 80 plus percent of this is people buying it as a desk decoration. Which doesn't look terrible, and it has the OLED screen. So, yeah, yeah, it's nice. And, that's it. It <laughs> and it's functional. Better, like the uh, arguable, well, that's what the. be. Um, <laughs> The, the thermal design worries me on that. The Argon one, I say this as somebody who's <laughs> had to fight with the thing and just looking at how it was designed, it was definitely mm. um, function followed form on this. And this just maybe can be completely You wrong. cut that little triangle off the top with a Dremel or a saw and then put some mesh with a fan. It's like, there, there you go. There's your exhaust. <laughs> Negative pressure all the way. <laughs> I, I mean, yes. If I go, go lay it on my CNC and drill out the side panels. And yep. Put a box fan next to I it. Mean, the, It'll be fine. They look like they pop out. At least one mm-hmm. of the gifs that yeah. they have on the Kickstarter page, they they show them popping out. So, you mean like the animated three D thing they made? Yes. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I yeah. I want to believe this thing's cheap enough too. Like the Argon One. I mean, it's hundred bucks. Yes. It's cheap. It, it falls into the. Oh, it's a neat thing to have, and if it ends up not being your thing, like whatever. You, Desk tester. You got the OLED desk thing. You can look and show people when they come over. They're like, that's my pine ass. <laughs> yes. The I'm pine ass. <laughs> 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 All right. So if you draw if you go into someone's place and they have this up on the desk, drop kick it. No. See how much they care. <laughs> no, no, no. You can invite people over to see your pine ass. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back to about 20 episodes ago. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, we have a reputation to maintain and uphold. <laughs> if you want to tell us about your pine ass and everything else that you might be doing with small embedded stuff, Adreno, um, Pi, Jetsons, whatever, we'd love to hear about that or any open source projects that you're aware of that we might not be, maybe one that you're working on. You want to come tell us about it? We'd be happy to have you. How can they do that, Pedro Mateus? You could do that in a multitude of different ways, though I'm not sure the age uh, rating on our website is appropriate if you want to tell <laughs> us about your pine ass or your uh, AJ Konas. Uh, that 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 may be a bit of a an issue. <laughs> but <laughs> LinuxGameCast.com, you go to the contact page. <laughs> I had to drop it in again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and you fill out the form. Make sure you pick LWDW as the uh, you know, feedback that you'd like to send for this eight, show. Eight ports on them. <laughs> I can't. I can't no. say what pulled into my hand. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna hold the coin. Eight holes. For yes. People. We will see you next week. Hey, I didn't say it, Steve Husband. (laughs) 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 That's, uh, yeah, no. That that, that was a good episode, if I do say so myself. (laughs) 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 I got to skirt the uh, inappropriate tag as much as I could without actually going over the edge. So, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you all our wonderful patrons and to everyone in chat. Don't, don't, don't read. <laughs> if you're listening, nothing's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing to see here. It's the past. Move, move along. Yes. <laughs> Thanks for showing up, everyone. And we'll see you next Bye, week. Bye, everyone. Bye. <laughs> 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 hey guys. <laughs>